In 2025, the world will continue to journey down a path marked by a troubling absence of fear for God, a trend prophesied in the book of Revelation. One of the most powerful moments in Revelation is the proclamation made by three angels who will fly across the sky, visible and audible to people around the globe. These angels will move across the world, delivering messages that set the tone for the end times. Visible to everyone, they will preach to the entire world, from the deserts of Saudi Arabia to the islands of Mauritius. Revelation 14, verses 6 to 11. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. What we are focusing on is the message of the first angel, the angel's proclamation is not a suggestion. The fact that the angel's first words are fear God reveals two profound truths. First, it emphasizes the essential nature of fearing God. This fear isn't a minor detail, but a fundamental starting point for understanding and relating to Him. To fear God means to respect, honor, and recognize His supreme authority, understanding that He alone holds power over life, death, and eternity. This type of fear is not a superficial respect, but a deep, reverent awareness of His holiness and justice, inspiring us to live righteously and humbly. Second, this command highlights the state of the world. The need for such a clear, urgent message points to a world that has largely abandoned the fear of God. A society that no longer respects His authority or holiness is a society adrift, increasingly embracing rebellion, blasphemy, and moral decay, signs of a world headed towards judgment. But as we step into 2025, we see a global society moving in the opposite direction, mocking what is sacred and dismissing the idea of fearing the Almighty. The first angel's warning serves as a call to remember who God is and how far the world has fallen from acknowledging Him. Instead of embracing the fear of the Lord, our world increasingly delights in irreverence. We see evidence of this lack of fear in the culture, media, and actions of society at large, and the warning signs are only growing stronger. Our current trajectory is toward a time when the very concept of fearing God will seem foreign and even offensive to many. The world is gradually losing the fear of God, a shift evident in how society views reverence and respect for Him. In the past, even criminals held a sense of respect for God that seems rare today. For example, it was once common practice for people, including criminals, to remove their hats when passing a church. This act wasn't merely ritual. It demonstrated an understanding that places of worship were sacred, deserving of respect regardless of one's lifestyle or beliefs. Today, however, this sense of reverence has diminished, replaced by an increasingly casual or indifferent attitude toward God and the sacred. The absence of the fear of God has become startlingly apparent in recent events. 
Consider, for instance, the recent Paris Olympics, where the opening ceremony included a mockery of Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper. This performance featured drag performers and entertainers, making it inherently blasphemous in nature. Out of all the stories and symbols that could have been celebrated, they chose to focus on a moment held sacred by Christians around the world, showing no respect for what is holy and pure. This kind of display is not merely a lack of respect. It's a blatant disregard for the fear of God. This mockery is not an isolated incident, but part of a larger trend, one that will likely continue and grow in 2025 as society moves further away from God. We live in an age where even the concept of blasphemy is increasingly seen as outdated or unnecessary. Popular culture and entertainment often test the boundaries of what is sacred, pushing the limits in ways that would have been unimaginable a few decades ago. Another notable example is the massive popularity of The Da Vinci Code, a novel by Dan Brown, and later a film directed by Ron Howard. This work generated significant backlash, as it presented a version of Christ's life that was not only fictional but deeply offensive to many Christians. The story suggested that Jesus Christ was married to Mary Magdalene and had a child, creating a bloodline supposedly preserved through secret societies over the centuries. This premise is not only false but also a grievous distortion of the truth. It is blasphemous and wicked. The audacity and sheer wickedness and sheer lack of the fear of God to invent and circulate such a narrative comes from a world that does not fear God, a world that, rather than revering Him, prefers to distort the sacred for profit and entertainment. And as we look ahead to 2025, we must brace ourselves for more of this disregard. It is not merely about the content of these stories or performances, it's about a pervasive spirit of rebellion that despises what is holy and delights in twisting it. What people fail to realize is that this path leads to God's judgment. The first angel's message warns us that the hour of his judgment is come. God's judgment is not some vague concept meant to frighten people into submission. It is a very real, very serious reality that is coming. In our culture, we tend to downplay the idea of judgment. We hear of God's love and grace, and indeed these are central to His character, but they do not negate His holiness and justice. God is not only loving, He is just, and He will not overlook unrepentant sin. As we face 2025, the world will edge ever closer to that hour of judgment, yet many remain blind to its approach. When Jesus spoke of fearing God, he used stark, powerful language. In Matthew 10, 28, he says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus does not present this as mere reverential awe. He speaks of a fear rooted in the reality of God's power over both life and eternity. Modern interpretations often soften the meaning of this fear, suggesting that it merely refers to reverential awe. But consider the power and authority of God, the Creator who can cast both soul and body into hell. This is not merely a God to be respected. He is a God to be feared with genuine awareness of His sovereignty and judgment. As I have said in the past, Many preachers today have reduced the fear of God to a comforting concept, devoid of any sense of dread or urgency. Imagine, however, standing face to face with a lion in the African wilderness, or a massive anaconda in the Amazon. The fear you would feel in that moment, the primal instinct for survival, the sense of power before you, begins to approximate the kind of fear we should have of God. God is not simply a being to be admired from afar. He is a consuming fire, an all-powerful creator and judge. This kind of fear is not unhealthy. It is a necessary recognition of who God truly is. The Greek word for fear, phobos, 
used in Matthew 10.28 and Luke 12.5, encompasses a range of meanings, from reverence to dread and terror. When we choose to interpret this word as mere respect, we dilute the weight of what Jesus is teaching. Matthew 10.28 would lose its impact if we translated it as, Do not be in reverential awe of those who kill the body, but rather be in reverential awe of him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Such a rendering fails to capture the depth of the warning Jesus is issuing. He is telling us to be genuinely, deeply aware of God's authority, power, and judgment. As we move further into 2025, this lack of fear for God will only lead society further into chaos, rebellion, and moral decline. Without the fear of the Lord, people feel free to act according to their own desires, ignoring the call to live righteously. This absence of fear leads to a moral decay where anything goes, where truth becomes relative, and where people openly reject the very concept of divine authority. As society loses its respect for God, we also lose the foundation of moral responsibility, and with it, the guardrails that keep us from complete spiritual disaster. In Revelation, we witness a world so entrenched in rebellion against God that even as judgments unfold, people refuse to repent. They are hardened in their defiance, emboldened in their blasphemy, and unmoved by warnings. This lack of repentance in the face of divine judgment will only grow worse as we move toward the final days. A world that doesn't fear God will welcome the Antichrist and the false prophet, and they will fit comfortably into a society that has rejected God's authority. The Bible presents God as both loving and just, merciful and holy. Hebrews 10.31 says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. These words capture the seriousness of God's nature. He is not merely a comforting figure or a gentle spirit. He is holy and his judgment is real. Many today, however, prefer to ignore this aspect of God, favoring an image that is more comforting, more accommodating. But God is not one to be trifled with. His holiness demands our reverence and his justice demands that sin be punished. This is why the fear of the Lord is essential. It keeps us grounded, aware of who God is and aligned with His will. A true fear of God leads us to repentance, humility, and a life that seeks to honor Him. Without it, we are left adrift, guided only by our desires and human understanding, which inevitably fall short. The fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom and the beginning of a life that truly glorifies Him. As we move into 2025, let us not be among those who dismiss or downplay the fear of God. Let us heed the angel's message in Revelation and remember that the hour of his judgment is come. This call is not just for unbelievers. It is a reminder to us, as followers of Christ, to live in a way that reflects God's holiness. Let us pray that we would not be influenced by a world that lacks fear, but instead embrace a healthy, reverent fear of the Lord. In 2025, as the world drifts further from God, let us draw nearer to Him, grounded in a fear that leads to wisdom, humility, and a life that honors our Creator and Judge. This fear is not something to shy away from. It is a vital part of our faith, a guiding force that aligns us with God's will, helping us live in obedience and readiness for His return. King Solomon the wisest king in history and the son of David, a man after God's own heart, left us with a final message in Ecclesiastes. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. It's striking that Solomon didn't end his wisdom-filled book by advising us to love God more, pray more, or give more to the poor. Instead, his parting words urge us to fear God, for a king known for wisdom beyond human measure, for insight into the deepest mysteries, and for unparalleled riches and power, 
this instruction to fear God carries immeasurable weight. Solomon understood the magnitude and incomprehensible nature of God, a reality that should awaken in us a profound reverence. God is unlike anything we can fully comprehend. He exists outside our limits, beyond human knowledge and imagination. This is a being who has existed from eternity past, a concept so vast that our finite minds cannot even grasp it. Our language itself falls short when we try to express the boundlessness, the power, the majesty, and the eternal nature of God. Words like omnipotent, eternal, and holy are inadequate, mere glimpses into the essence of who God is. He exists beyond time, beyond space, and beyond all that we know or understand. This understanding is the foundation of true reverence, the kind of reverence that Solomon was pointing us toward. Brothers and sisters, one day we will stand before this God, and no matter how much we may try to prepare, the moment we come face to face with Him will exceed anything we could imagine. In that instant, all our ideas about His greatness, holiness, and majesty will pale in comparison to the reality. The Bible describes God as a consuming fire, and indeed, when we encounter Him, the overwhelming immensity and purity of His presence will shake us to the core. His holiness is a standard that far surpasses anything on earth. In that moment, we will feel a fear unlike any other. This is the fear Solomon spoke of, a fear that recognizes God's rightful place as the eternal, all-powerful Creator. It's a fear that draws us into alignment with His will, that humbles us, and that helps us live in a way that honors His holiness.